Hello, my name is Jesse Miller. I play bass for Lotus and we're gonna check out some of my rig today. Um, over here is the pedal board. Um, I don't use a crazy amount of pedals, but um, just uh, some, some pretty simple uh, little distortion here. Uh, octave pedal. And this has this nice feature of getting rid of the original tone. It's for just a pure sub sound. Um, and this is the most recent edition of Phaser, which is kind of fun, pretty subtle. I've been enjoying that. Uh, Moog low pass filter for the synth filter downs. I like to use that a lot with distortion. And a uh, delay pedal which also plays pretty nicely with the filter to do things like So that's the pedal board. It actually starts here at this ABC box. So I have an input for my electric bass, which is the primary thing that's coming in, but there's also inputs for um, synth bass that um, if I'm doing a synth bass from the computer or synth bass from the Moog. Um, so that all is the, the first part. Um, goes from there to the uh, Three Leaf Audio octave pedal. And then to the Ibanez Turbo Tube Screamer. And this is the... Um, it's a pretty subtle drive, but if you, if you run it on turbo mode, it lets enough low end through that um, works well for bass. Um, from there to the MXR Phase 90, and then into the low pass filter, and then from there to the volume pedal, and final stage to the Boss DD5, the um, slightly older version, but I know myself and I think the rest of the guys in the band like to use these because he has this external tap tempo, so you can tap in your tempo before you turn it on and without a lot of extra presses of the of uh, the delay pedal to get it on. I play clean um, a lot of the time. I, I, I don't use the effects, I would say, super often, but I would say the, the Moog filter is definitely um, a big part of my sound. I really like to use it just how I would operate when I'm playing synth, like um, operating the cutoff. So this pedal is is the expression for the cutoff frequency. So a lot of times I'm doing like really slow kind of filters or um, sometimes just some kind of more expressive kind of things to bring out different sounds and get a more synthy sound. Or, um, you know, as I filter down, sometimes it can emphasize the sub frequencies more. So I um, kind of use that. And then definitely can use it in combination with some of these other effects. Like if I'm running a distortion, that adds a little bit of uh, like higher harmonics. So um, I like to turn that on to get more uh, like more of a sweep from bottom and the top end. And same thing like with the delay. If you filter down, you don't really hear the delay. And then you can just kind of pop it up on some notes to get this longer delay thing. So yeah, it's kind of a way to control some of the other sounds. So this is a very cheap Fender Mexican jazz bass. Um, I swapped out the pickups, but everything else is uh, the same cheap model. I don't know, for some reason I just liked it and have stuck with this for a long time. Uh, these are a Liddy Fralin, just a hand wound kind of pickup. Um, so I, I think I've had this bass for about, um, I don't know, 17, 18 years, maybe more than that. Um, the action is really high, um, but which feels weird for other bass players, but I don't know, for me it feels normal. I tend to use pretty heavy strings and never change them, <laughs> maybe like every 18 months or something. And then, yeah, the pick is an another big part of my sound. It's a really thick graphite pick, um, so, yeah. Compared to this, you get a lot of extra pop, which I like for um, 
just uh, kind of percussive style. Everything, I just keep it um, all the way at 10, so it's like even, even blend between both pickups and tone all the way up. Um, so yeah, keep it, keep it pretty simple on this side. I'm using a Avalon DI, which is a, I don't know, a really nice sound for DI, and then it goes into this Mark Bass amp and then feeding a 1x15 cabinet and a 4x10 cabinet. Um, I used to run Eden amps for years, but those broke and have proved uh, hard to find parts for. So uh, Mark Bass is it's like pretty transparent sound, just really gives me good amplification without a whole lot of coloring, which I like. You know, I got into this configuration of 1x15 and 4x10 um, early on, and I don't know, I just like the, I like the sound of it, so I've, I've stuck with this. It's, it's more of kind of the mid-range from the 15, so that's why we, we mic up the 15, so that's a lot of the tone. And then the 4x10 is just some extra power on stage, gives more of the lows and more of the highs and, and fills it out. So it feels good behind me. And then um, there's some good options between the DI and the mic for Evan at front of house to uh, mix the sound. So I start down here. The um, this this foot pedal is what I use to control um, the samples that I'm running from this Ableton set. So for any given song, I'm using this mono controller to um, to uh, dial up the song. So this this button sets the tempo, um, sets up anything that I'm going to be playing with the keyboard or with the foot pedal. Um, so actually on stage, this just stays closed the whole time and I don't need to look like I'm checking my email. So, um, yeah, this is, it's pretty simple, but, um, you know, once I have it set here, there's usually just one patch per song. So I'm doing things like triggering the vocals or triggering some synth parts. sometimes playing playing sounds on the pads here some volume control here if I need it but usually that stays at a hundred um, and this also will dial up if I'm using either either um, something I've sampled here or the mode um, so, like here's a Cold Facts is the opening song on our new album. So when I, when I dial that up here, it, it activates the patch on, on the Moog and sets me up to be able to play it. So nice, nice simple analog sound from that and and then some of the other sounds are just sample sets that I've made from some of my analog synth collection to you know, kind of mix it up. And um, I definitely play bass lines a lot differently when I'm playing it on a keyboard as opposed to the bass. So just to be able to get like a, a wider sound and expand beyond the electric bass occasionally. It came about the decision to use this MPK-61 because my original sampler was um, a Roland thing from Kind of before, um, before it was easier to run a software thing. So it was a zip disk based system and actually had 16 pads on it. So a lot of my initial banks were dependent on having 16 pads. So they actually don't even make this keyboard anymore. There's a different uh, version, but, and I really don't need this many keys, but at the time it was really the only good thing that had 16 pads to play that. But you know, there's there's a lot of control on here, almost like really more than I need for this set. So maybe at some point I'll go to a smaller one as long as I, I really need to have the 16 pads like this to do that control. Um, otherwise, it's just you know pretty simple MIDI keyboard to control the sound source here and, and any sound source in the that's coming from the laptop. Yeah. So this is just really all the in and out for um, the samples and things that are running into. Um, the pedal board. So uh, I've got the interface here. So that's handling breaking out everything from the uh, laptop. So that includes any of the sample based stuff, uh, the samples that are just a separate left, right, they're going to. 
um, the system, and then this uh, a click line for any time we need to run a click with the samples. So that's just kind of the uh, in out of everything. And the only final piece is just this hot shot, and this is just to unmute this microphone here. So um, if we need to say anything to the monitor engineer or any other guys, I can hit that right here, and then they don't have to hear this mic when I let go. We all use different in ears. I just use some Sennheisers that I've had for years, and it just haven't broken, so <laughs> I haven't replaced them. But yeah, it, it makes it. Um, it keeps the stage quieter, saves our hearing, and, and uh, yeah, lets us do things with the samples that can be pretty tricky otherwise. Thanks for checking out my rig. Um, if you want to check out the newest Lotus, we just put out a new record called Frames Per Second, and we are out on the road supporting it in 2019, so come see all this stuff in action. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.